Hey everyone, I'm here in Lamington National Park, a couple of hours outside of Brisbane, and I'm going to start by telling you a story. This is the story of a photographer. He also had a YouTube channel and he thought it would be an amazing idea to go to a really scenic waterfall and see if he could take photos with just his mobile phone, edit it with free apps in the mobile phone, and then try to fool a landscape photographer into thinking that the photos were actually taken with the regular DSLR camera. So that would be taking really, really professional looking photos with the mobile phone. It was a great idea, but then that photographer forgot to take the little thing, the little tripod that he could attach the mobile phone to his tripod with so that it could be stable for really long exposure photos. And so the whole idea went out the window. Well, obviously that photographer is me and that's what's happened, but I'm still gonna walk down to the waterfalls, which is Elabana Falls, which are, from what I've seen online, amazing, but I've never actually made it there before. So today I'm heading down there, gonna get a few photos and share the spot with you. All right, I'm obviously quite unfit because I've just started and I'm already puffing. And uh, it's not easy holding the gimbal out like this and walking on this path. So I'm going to go and I'll see you down at the falls. Alright, so I'm getting really, really excited now because I can actually see the falls from here almost down there and they're really really flowing strongly so I'm gonna get some really cool photos I think. Before I show you the photos that I took, I'll just mention Lamington National Park because if you're in or around Brisbane, Lamington National Park is really, really worth a day trip. It's a couple of hours drive out of Brisbane, but it's World Heritage listed forest. It's got a whole lot of things to see and do. There's a whole bunch of waterfalls, not just Elabana Falls, but there's also Moran's Falls, which have an 80 meter drop into the valley below and sweeping views of the surrounding forest, which is really worth the trip in itself. There's also a treetop walk, uh, which is, you know, that's a fun one, a really easy walk. So it's great if you've got kids or old people maybe that maybe can't handle the rougher tracks. So, you know, there's a bunch of things to see and do. There's also, you can feed parrots uh, at O'Reilly's, which is at the top of the hill. Um, lots of things. So definitely worth the trip, but let's get to the photos. Okay, so in terms of the photos that I took, I guess for me, the biggest challenge of doing any kind of landscape photography is to take photos that stand out from, you know, the others, that they don't look like every other photo that's been taken in that location. So while I do actually like these first two photos that I took, this one is nice enough. Technically, everything is okay in terms of focus and composition and whatever, but it's not special enough to really stand out. Uh, it's just an ordinary photo. Sure, the settings are probably well selected and everything's sharp that should be. Your eye does move through the frame. There's elements of interest throughout the image from front to back, but it doesn't wow you. So nice picture, but not with the wow factor. Same with this one, which was taken at the other part. This is. This is basically the first part of the falls that you get to when you walk down the path. Um, so then you walk another 50 meters or so and you end up at this part, which is the part that most people photograph. And while I like this photo, if you Google Elabana Falls, 
you're going to find thousands of photos that look more or less the same as this. So it's a nice photo, I'm happy to have taken it, but would I enter this into a landscape photography competition or something like that? Absolutely not. There's, there's nothing that's really, you know, impactful about it. It's just a pretty picture, but hey, there's nothing wrong with pretty pictures. Uh, but in order to make it my own, my own take on that scene, I want to find something that's different from what the way that everybody else is photographing it. So uh, for a start, I'm a documentary photographer and a street photographer as well. So landscape isn't necessarily my obsession as it is with some. So for me, I actually like to have that human element. So this photo, to me, I actually preferred this one to the previous one because for me, that person there completes the photo. The photographer in the scene, it's telling more of a story of the place because yes, this is a beautiful spot, but it is a tourist attraction and people go there all the time to take photos. So this is telling that story, the actual story of the place rather than just what it looks like. Uh, and I was actually really happy with this photo because when you take photos of people, you don't want a slow shutter speed because if they move, then there's going to be motion blur in the photo where you don't want it. But when you take waterfall photos, it's nice to have a slow shutter speed to get that water looking silky smooth as it's traveling while the shutter's open. And in this photo, I got the best of both because he was taking a photo and holding as still as he possibly could to take the photo. I managed to use a slower shutter speed so the waterfall looks awesome, but he is still quite sharp as well. So I got that a couple of times with these falls, which was nice to do some, I guess, more documentary photography of a scenic place rather than just the place itself. Um, but I still hadn't found that unique composition that was going to be different from all the others. So I climbed up onto the rock to get a different vantage point and I took this photo. And for me, this is my favorite from the day because for me, it's well composed. Your eye really moves through the frame. There's something of interest in the foreground, in the background, even in the middle. I like the plants there and that little pond that's at the bottom of the waterfall. There's interest all throughout the picture and it's sharp all the way through. And for me, it just, it, it feels like you're standing in that place and you're kind of enveloped in the scene more than the other photos where it looks like you're kind of standing back at a distance. So I quite like this photo and I would say this is my photo of the day. Um, and this one also is a slightly different take from what you usually see. But to me in this one, I think the falls at the foreground are too dominant and they kind of take all of your focus and the ones in the background kind of get lost a little bit. I, I don't feel it's as balanced as the previous one, but that's my photos from that day. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's definitely worth a trip just to see the falls, whether you get great photos or not, these would have to be my favorite waterfalls around Brisbane. And uh, definitely the other things in the area make it well worth the trip as well. Even the, the wildlife that you can stumble onto, um, the plant life, the fungus and mushrooms and things, all of it, it's just a really great place for a day trip out of Brisbane. So that's it. If you're into waterfalls, then you can also check out these videos. Um, if you're watching on a mobile phone, there's not going to be anything there. So I'm going to look like an idiot, but if you're looking on computer, yeah, click on those links, check out those videos. If you're not subscribing already, please do that. And I'm going to go and I'll see you in the next video.